Okay, the fourth, uh, the fourth subtopic we look at on how uh, changing body composition uh, can enhance the performance of the athlete. Kalau kita tanya atlet eh, memang banyak atlet dia nak change dia punya body composition. Kalau highly trained atlet ya, they are typically lean but may want to gain muscle mass to increase strength or lose a small amount of body fat. Sebab apa dia nak improve dia power to weight ratio or dia balance dia. So, athlete ni dia hope that eh, hope to advance to the next level such as high school athletes to the collegiate level and collegiate athletes to the professional level. And may change weight ataupun body composition salah satu cara untuk become more competitive. Kalau lah yang lesser train athlete, eh, they often wish to increase muscle mass and also untuk lose body fat, sometimes in substantial amount. Uh, kalau some rec uh, recreational athlete, dia nak pula lose moderate to substantial amount of body fat. And this loss of body fat may positively affect the performance. Eh. But in many cases, the desire to look body fat is related more to appearance and the desire for better health. Minority athlete ni, they need to gain body weight and need to increase body fat eh, in addition to increase the muscle mass. Regardless lah apa saja athlete punya priority, the same questions are frequently kalau katakan uh, athlete ni, dia selalu tak kalau you berarti, uh, dia selalu tanya how much should I weigh? What percentage of body fat should I have? Ataupun how do I increase my muscle mass? How do I lose or gain body fat? How do I increase muscle mass and how do I and also lose body fat at the same time. So kita kat sini lah kita akan tengok ya macam mana how kita boleh target uh, weight based on body composition uh, determine and briefly uh, akan tengok lah macam mana kita outline the changes in excessive and training yang needed to achieve muscle mass ataupun body fat goals. Okay. Bila atlet tu dia nak, dia nak tahu kan apa body composition yang dia patut ada lah kan. So desired body composition sebenarnya kita boleh guna untuk determine the target weight. Okay, the desired body composition. After body composition has been estimated as accurately as possible. So atlet they can use that information to establish their optimal body composition goal. Athlete, they should be cautious, eh? Should be caution to choose realistically body mass and also body fat goals. Ha, dia kena sangat-sangat, uh, orang kata rasional lah kenapa dia nak uh, that kind of body mass and juga body fat goals. Eh? And dia kena consider juga dia punya genetic predisposition, toolliness and fatness. Once body composition goals dah chosen, The weight that reflects those goals can be estimated lah. So this weight is referred to as a target body weight. Or kita panggil sebagai body weight goal. Okay. And the target body weight is only an estimate and rigid adherence to attaining a given scale weight or body composition is never recommended. Tetapi, target body weight can be helpful guideline and formula for calculation such as weight. Saya akan tunjuk macam ni. And ni formula ni kita guna dengan kita harapan bahawa, okay, yang atlet tu dia u hydration. Ha, sebab tu kita akan guna this formula. Okay, again, untuk dia nak desire body weight ni, dia punya general recommendation. Dia mesti, body composition must be estimated as accurate as possible. Kena consider genetic predisposition. Okay, kena ada realistic, realistic goals. And attaining or maintaining goals does not pull the health at risk and other formula dia. Okay, this is the formula. Maknanya, berapa target body weight of the athlete? Okay, adalah equal to the current fat free mass. Divide by 1 minus desired percentage of body fat. The body fat. And as I mentioned just now, this formula kita guna kalau kita assume that athlete is a state of hydration and have a constant of fat free mass. 
Now, kita tengok this. Okay. Please answer this question during the class. Okay. There is one baseball player and currently with 86 kilogram and approximately 60% of body fat. His current fat free mass is 84% of his weight ataupun 72.5 gram and he has approximately 13.5 kilogram of body fat. And his goal is 10% of body fat. Dia punya goal eh. So how many kilogram he needs to reduce to achieve his target body weight? So what you have to do is the fat, current fat free mass you have to divide by 1 minus the desired percentage of body fat. So please calculate. And the question is how many kilogram he needs to reduce to achieve his target body weight. Please share your answer during the class tomorrow. And what if the same athlete, dia bukan setakat nak loss fat. But at the same time, he wants to gain muscles. And so, tambahan, dia kata, he wishes, okay, kita, kalau kita ambil kat sini, dia current weight sama saja, semua sama, cuma dia kata, dia wish to gain 2.2 kilogram of muscle mass and reduce fat to 8% for performance and appearance reasons. So, target body weight, dia sama saja tadi, Cuma apa yang dia buat adalah, okay, current fat free mass kena tambah dengan desired fat free mass increase. Yeah. Then they have to divide by 1 minus desired percentage of body fat. So dalam kata ini adalah, the current FFM berapa? Tambah adalah, okay, 2.2 kilogram kan? The, apa, the which is gain of muscle mass is desired. Bahagi dengan 1 minus... The desired adalah 8%. So, 1 minus 0.08. So, you will get the answer. Again, please share the answer during the class. So, it should be noted that choosing desirable amount and proportion of fat free mass and body fat is not difficult. Tetapi, achieving such levels may be. Above all, body composition and weight goal must be realistic and achievable via diet and training programs then do not put the at least health at risk. Body composition also can be changed eh, by increasing muscle mass. When the appropriate stimulus is applied to skeletal muscle and the necessary hormonal and nutritional environment is present, muscle mass can increase. First, an overload stimulus must be applied consistently over time. The muscle must be stimulated to produce force. Okay, kalau muscle stimulated to produce force, maknanya they have to do what? They have to do the resistance training eh? at a greater frequency, intensity and also uh, duration and then is accustomed. Eh? Athlete generally accomplish this through one of many strength training approach. And the increase in muscle mass eh, is referred to as hypertrophy. Kan, kalau kita ingat lagi kan? And ni adalah result of individual muscle fiber that being stimulated to increase in size by synthesizing more contractile protein. So, yang pertama, cara nak increase the muscle mass adalah dengan exercise. Kita tahu bahawa for the sedentary adult or the athlete who is not accustomed to strength training, eh, virtually any strength training protocol will result in increases in strength and some initial increases in muscle mass. Once athletes are accustomed to basic strength training, eh, further increases in muscle mass can be achieved through periodized strength training. Okay. The hypertrophy phase of periodized strength training is designed to maximize the potential 
Uh, for increasing muscle mass eh, and dia ni dikategorize by an emphasis on increasing the total volume of strength training. Increasing strength training volume is accomplished eh, by structuring a large number of sets ataupun kita panggil repetition to a variety strength training exercise. Intensity ataupun load itu amount of weight lifted tu eh, is kept in the moderate range so that the prescribed number of set and repetition can be completed eh, can be completed eh. so selalunya macam mana nak buat dia kena ada prioritize strength training ataupun dia masih ada hypotrophy phase okay. yang kedua we know that kalau kita nak increase muscle mass bukan setakat exercise tetapi role of nutrition is also very very important yang pertama they have to consume Sufficient energy intake. Proportion nutrition, eh, proper nutrition is necessary untuk kita support the increase in muscle size that is associated dengan resistance training program. Eh, macam yang saya cakap tadi lah. Although eh, many nutritionists are important for, eh, many nutrients are important for muscle growth, they are to receive the majority eh, energy dengan protein. Synthesis muscle tissue require positive energy balance. Iaitu calorie intake mesti greater than calorie expenditure. Atlet ni, they must also be in positive nitrogen balance. Kita dah belajar juga sebelum ni. And they must be also positive muscle protein balance. Kalau they have positive nitrogen balance occur when total nitrogen balance, eh, when total nitrogen intake is greater than nitrogen loss via the urine and feces. Dengan kata lain, atlet ni must consume A sufficient amount of battery protein. Okay, positive muscle protein balance occur bila muscle protein synthesis is greater than muscle protein breakdown. Eh, kita dah belajar MPB, okay? MPB, MPS kena lebih greater daripada MPB. To achieve positive energy, uh, nitrogen and muscle protein balance, uh, so semua orang, uh, semua orang the athlete have to eat Adequate energy intake uh, sebab dia adalah sangat-sangat penting as and uh, uh, is just as important as adequate protein intake. Athlete yang who wish to increase muscle mass should determine their baseline energy intake which is the approximate amount of kilocalorie needed daily to maintain current body weight and composition. Daily energy intake eh, banyak di, uh, dipengaruhi ada uh, uh, amount of energy expended melalui physical activity. Macam kita tahu eh, daily energy requirement for female MMA athlete is estimated to be uh, approximately dalam 35 and 38 kilogram um, per kilocalorie per kilogram respectively. Eh, bila activity equivalent to uh, moderate intensity exercise 3 to 5 days a week or low intensity and short duration training daily. Kita estimated that eh, an additional 5 kilocalorie above baseline energy needed is required to support the growth of 1 gram of tissue. Okay. So, uh, the rule of thumb to estimate support to support resistance training program adalah additional approximately 500 to 400 to 500 kilocalorie daily dan additionally approximately 50 gram, 15 Uh, gram protein daily. 